In this particular video, I will cover three things. First, how to derive the steady state uh, of the baseline real business cycle model with leisure using pen and paper. Second, I will then show you how to insert that into a steady state model block in Dynair. And third, I will also show you some more latex capabilities of Dynair that make life easier when you're trying to compute the steady state. I will also focus on one problem that we often encounter um, with these G models. That is whether or not we can actually compute the steady state model in closed form. And for this, I will actually consider two different models. Uh, one is the RBC model with lock utility, where we act actually can compute uh, the steady state uh, in closed form for all variables. But then also another specification with CS utility, where from for labor, uh, we cannot use that in closed form, but need to rely on numerical optimization technique. Okay, and I will show you uh, some tips, um, how to insert this also in a steady state model block, and also how to basically how to make uh, efficient use of Dynair to compute the steady state uh, of often both cases. There are timestamps in the description of the video, so feel free to skip ahead. Um, if you find this video useful, uh, or if you spot any mistakes, then please let me know in the comment section. Also, check out my blog for more stuff on DSG models and Dynair. Good. Now, let us uh, compute the steady state. The steady state of a model is a fixed point uh, in the sense that there is a set of values for the endogenous variables that are in equilibrium, but and very importantly, in the absence of shocks, remain just constant over time. So, and usually we want to provide a, um, a recipe on how to compute these values sequentially. Okay, ideally we can do this on paper in closed form. We have analytical expressions for this. In practice though, um, we, can do, we, we can often do this for many variables, but not for all. So for some, we need to uh, use some numerical optimization technique to find this fixed point. And this is actually also why I chose uh, those two different utility functions, because for the lock utility case, we can actually uh, derive the steady state in closed form. Um, but for the CS utility functions, we can uh, we, we need to uh, compute the steady state for our labor uh, using numerical optimization. So let's derive this recipe on paper. OK, now let's compute the steady state. This is, again, a fixed point in the absence of shocks. And this point is supposed uh, to be such that all endogenous variables remain constant over time. So let's start with the steady state value of technology. A steady state by definition is in the absence of shocks. So we don't care about the shocks here. And this is such that the variables remain unchanged. So we drop the time indices. Okay, and I will denote this, these variables in steady state with a bar. Okay, and then rewriting this, we see that a bar is equal to one. Now we have a marginal cost, which is, which is also very easy, okay, which was given by this equation. Of course, we drop time indices and denote this with a bar. Now the Euler equation gives you st the steady state interest rate. Okay, now again, dropping time indices. Okay, and in the absence of shocks, so there's no uncertainty here, so we don't need the expectation operator as well. And then we can simply rewrite this to get um, steady state um, interest rate. Now comes the tricky part and for this you will probably need some experience but basically you just go through your model equations and try to evaluate them in steady state and uh, maybe plug plug them in into each other. Um, for the RBC model here the trick is to express uh, to find ratios in terms of steady state labor. So for instance let's have a look at the capital demand Okay, which is given in steady state. And let's 
we, ex we express this as steady state capital in relation to steady state labor that is equal to um, marginal costs times and the idea here is to express the right hand side here in terms that are already known so we know all the parameters and we have already computed steady state for a for r and for the marginal cost so this is a known and a closed form expression for uh, steady state capital over labor now the uh, labor demand is equal to okay since i've just computed steady state k over l i can use it here to compute um, steady state wages um, for capital accumulation the law of motion for capital so drop the time indices and start rearranging to get that i bar equals delta times k bar so we don't have an expression for k bar what we do have one for k bar over l bar and this is why we also express steady state investment in terms of steady state labor now production function which can actually be written down by a bar times k bar over l bar alpha times l bar okay so we can again express steady state output in terms of steady state labor as this expression the right hand side is known at this point now market clearing in steady state and i do have expressions for y over l and i over l so i will get also a steady state relationship for consumption over labor so now we have expressed all endogenous variables either in just in terms of parameters or in terms of steady state labor so once we know steady state labor then we can determine all uh, the steady state of all endogenous variables and here is um, now the distinction between which utility function we we use okay so let's start with the log utility okay we have the um, labor supply equation okay and we can now rearrange or multiply with labor here and put this in here because it's the inverse okay again the idea is to try to re-express the right hand expression just in terms that you know that you already have available and then we can go ahead and rearrange okay and some further simplification here the the left hand side is steady state labor is expressed in endogenous variables that are already known so since they are um, a function of the parameters and of other parameters so this is a closed form expression for steady state labor now what about ces utility labor supply in steady state is given by so and i can try to again re -ex we uh, express this by c over l but then i will have this uh, expression here on the right hand side okay and there is no way that i can um, simplify this expression or rearrange um, such that i will have l bar on the left hand side and terms that are or that i already know on the right hand side okay this can not be solved in closed form but this is a very simple equation for the computer to solve just given a initial um, value for l bar it will find you um, the fixed point of this equation 
Okay, and once I have L bar, our recipe is then, and that's it. This completes the steady state computations. Okay, now here's a summary of the, um, of the steady state recipe, which we can then provide, for instance, to Dynair to compute the steady state. We express everything in terms of in relation to steady state labor and then we need to um, compute steady state labor for log utility. We have a closed form expression for the CS utility. We, we need to use some numerical optimization technique to find L bar, so the steady state of labor. Once we have that, we can simply compute all the variables by multiplying the ratios by uh, this steady state labor. Okay, now let's have a look on how to compute the steady state in a mode file in Dynair. Let's start with the mode file I derived in another video on the theory on derivation of the optimality conditions uh, of the baseline RBC model with lock utility and CUS utility. And I've shown how to create uh, or how to use uh, Dynair's preprocessor to create uh, macro variables to distinguish um, different uh, cases of the model, in particular, which uh, utility function I'm using. So if I'm setting this to one, I'm considering the uh, lock utility case. If it is something else like zero, um, then this will be the more general CES case. So we've declared endogenous variables and also we're using Dynair's later capabilities um, um, for a prettier output. For, or for further use. So I'm also, I have also shown uh, how to declare model local variables in the model block and how to use those latex expressions as well here. So those are the exogenous uh, variables, those are the par parameters. And here you can actually see that, so if log utility is equal to zero, um, then we have two additional parameters, eta c and eta l. Okay, we, can, we could actually also make this not equal to one. All right, now let's have a look at the parameter calibration. Um, again, if this is not equal one, then we have two additional parameters which we need to calibrate. Now those are model local variables. And again, in the case that I'm having log utility, then I only taking the inverse of uh, consumption or the inverse of one minus uh, labor. But if I'm having CS utility, then those minus ones will actually be minus eta C and eta L. And also I use model local variables for uh, the marginal products of production. Okay, so note that here I have de just declared the latex um, names. You don't have to do this. This is just for prettier um, formatting of the latex PDFs. Okay, now those are the model equations and we've discussed here the, the latex stuff. Okay, now let's actually go ahead and do the steady state block, okay? Now first let's do a complete numerical approach. So say you don't know how to compute the steady state analytically and want to use um, the nearest numerical optimization techniques to compute it for you. And for this we have a so-called init val block for initial values where you just um, give or have to declare the initial values for the optimizer. And you have to do this for all declared endogenous variables. Okay, so in here you should be clever, okay, because um, uh, giving uh, good initial values for to an optimizer is very important uh, for the optimizer to actually find the steady state. So I know that in my model, um, this is actually uh, the um, TFP level is actually normalized to one. So this is the actual analytical steady state. Also, uh, we don't really care about marginal costs in the model, but I have this uh, model equations where MC is always to one. So of course this will be the case in steady state as well. Now, what about the interest rate? Um, well, this is usually around 3% for um, roundabout for RBC models. The steady state labor, mm, 24 hours, I'm working eight hours a day, so let's uh, be around one third. Now, 
steady state output is usually uh, above one. Okay, so if you have some experience, you you will have a feeling for these uh, for these values. So say 1.2. And of course, we have market clearing that consumption plus investment must be equal to output. So I have to well assume that consumption is maybe I don't know 0 0.9. And this would be then imply that investment is 0 0.3. You don't really have to have exact numbers. Um, this is just initial values. So I could do also 0 0.35 or something. Um, and what is left? Um, uh, of course, capital. So the, um, the capital to output ratio um, is usually around uh, 10. So often you will find that capital is just 10 times output here. So let's do a 12 here and um, for the wage, um, it's uh, something like that. Okay. And then what you usually just do is tell Dynair to compute the steady state. Save the file. Okay, then I'm using Dynair 4.64. RBC nonlinear is what's my file name called. And we have actually found the steady state, or Dynair's numerical optimization technique has found the steady state. There are a bunch of options you could provide. Um, so which optimizer to choose, how many iterations, what is the actual difference level when the optimizer um, has or such that the optimizer decides when to stop the optimization and you would all uh, put um, these in here. Okay, so for instance if you want to have another um, algorithm um, this also sometimes help. Okay, so check out the manual on all the options that you can choose. Usually or in this case, we can stick to the default values. Okay, now we actually have a recipe on how to compute the steady state in closed form, right? So this is this is the the recipe here, and we actually also know that uh, it depends on the specification of the utility function whether or not we can compute labor in closed form or if we want to use a numerical optimization technique technique for that. So let's um, put this into a so-called steady state model block. Okay, now let's uh, distinguish this the, the case whether or not we have the um, analytical steady state or we want to use so using a steady state model block or use init file. So let's create another macro variable. Let's call this steady state um, analytic or let's call this analytical steady state. So if that is equal to one, I want to use this a so-called steady state model block. Okay, so if analytical steady state equals one, then I'm using or I want to use a steady state model block, which we will enter in a second and in all other cases just use a d init file block okay now let's enter the model equations so the the recipe okay so let's enter this and see what happens okay so this is the exact recipe i uh, have derived on paper um, and I have some, whenever I'm declaring some auxiliary variables, um, for instance, this, this steady state capital over labor re relationship ratio here, uh, I tend to use uppercase letters for this. And once I have defined this, I can actually reuse this uh, into the following equation. So this is more, this is why I always call this a recipe because Dynair will sequentially run each line after the other. Okay, and everything depends basically then on the steady state labor. And let's first do log utility. Okay, so let's define log utility here. Then we have everything in closed form, right? So this is then closed form. 
and I'm running the steady command here. Let's see what happens. Okay. We've computed the steady state. Now, what if we change the um, type of utility function to CS? Then the steady state model actually does not compute the steady state for us uh, correctly. Okay, so let's see what happens. We get an error. Okay, and actually, Dynair tells you where you uh, have to look in which equations. So, this is equation number two I should look into. And of course, equation number two, this is one, this is two, uh, depends on the marginal utilities, which is different in both cases. Okay, now for the CS utility, we actually have to consider a numerical optimization technique. Okay, again, remember for the CS utility, I want to solve this equation to find the DL bar that solves this equation. And to do so, we need to write a so-called help of MATLAB function. Now, I'm calling this RBC steady state helper, and it is a bunch of input arguments. So first is start value, steady state wages, steady state consumption over labor, and those parameters that are needed to compute this equation here. Okay, and this equation, so I've put everything on the left-hand side. Um, I'm solving this with F solve, so I'm minimizing this equation here in a sense. Uh, find the L where this is, is exactly to zero using initial value L zero and some option. Okay, now let's save this and very importantly, keep the dot M extension here and then copy the call to this function. All right, and let's distinguish those two cases. So if log utility equals one, then I'm having the closed form here. And if it is not to one, then I'm using this expression here. Let's see what happens. L zero is not defined. Of course, I need to define some starting value, you could do, I don't know, one third. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I've called this C over L here. And there you go. Okay, now the last thing I want to cover is um, some more uh, pre-processing capabilities of Dynair. Okay, so let's consider again the lock utility case here um, where we have everything in closed form, for instance, and have a look at the steady state. And let's see, I have done some mistake here, okay? And I have compute this is 0 0.9, this 1.1. For some instance, I have, I have just a mistake in the uh, steady state. Uh, model block. And then Dynair will actually give you the equation so I should have a look what is wrong, what is going on. But this does not look so pretty here. Okay, so and what you can do is to give those equations name tags. Okay, and so this is very easily done by using um, in square brackets name equal whatever you want to call this equation and that's it. Okay, so let's do this for all equations. Okay, so here you can then see, okay, so the equation named total factor productivity, there's something wrong, and marginal costs, this, the residual there. So the left-hand side minus the right-hand side is not equal to zero, and you can fix this there. Okay, and this will often guide you to the correct equation. So assume you have a model with a thousand equations. This is very handy to not count those equations, but to exa exactly know in which equation there might be an error here. Now let's fix this one. And you can also, whatever you have in the steady state model block, uh, print into your LaTeX file. So there's another command, write, 
LaTeX steady state model. Let's do this. And let's have a look at the Okay, so on the last page, we then have the steady state, the recipe for the steady state. Okay, uh, unfortunately um, for the your auxiliary variables, um, we don't have an interface yet to also provide LaTeX names to this. Okay, but for other, all other variables, the endogenous you declared and the parents you declared, the LaTeX names will be used here as well. Okay, so this is basically exactly what I have in my presentation. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this video insightful. Um, please leave your comments below. In the next videos, I will cover other topics like calibrating the model parameters, um, how to linearize or log linearize the model equations by hand, and do you really have to? How to do simulations uh, in Dynair, both stochastics and deterministic ones, and also how to estimate the parameters with either full information estimation techniques like maximum likelihood or Bayesian MCMC methods or limited information methods uh, such as GMM or SMM. Um, we will also have a look at different variants of the model and discuss uh, what this means in economic terms for say welfare or policy issues. Um, basically this whole video series has a, um, has, a, has a goal to showcase you all the neat little things you can do with Dynair to give you an introduction to the toolboxes Dynair offers and that make life as a macroeconomist uh, easier. Thank you. <laughs>